moving forward in NBA, Shaq and Charles Barkley um, basically put some statements out um, this week, basically saying that they think that the NBA should scrap this season, that it should, listen, let everyone go home, let the players get healthy, let the fans stay healthy, and just scrap it. And he also stated that even if someone does win the title, he doesn't think that they'll be really respected just because of the way the season went down and those who lost momentum, that he just thinks that, you know, it should be scrapped. So some people and some articles said that, you know, he, he may have lost some fans from this comment um, because some players like, yo, we just want to play. Like, what do you mean scrap it? Um, so what are, your, what are your thoughts on this? You want to go first, Eric? Yeah. Um, so I, I agree with a portion of it. To me, there is no asterisk if you win a championship. Um, we've seen teams win in a strike shortened season. Doesn't matter. Um, there are so many elements that go into a championship season. Almost every championship, you could find a way to put an asterisk next to it. Um, there are plenty of people who feel like when the Warriors won their championships, they caught a lot of breaks with injuries. Are we putting asterisks next to teams who win because of injuries? No. But I do agree. I think we're getting close. Not quite there, but I think we're getting close to a point where it might be time to say, you know what? It's a lost season. Um, I think there are yeah. far too many moving parts. We got to keep in mind that there are a lot of guys, in order for this to happen, there are going to be some, some teams that are going to have to go into some form of isolation and quarantine where they're going to be away from their families as the rest of the season plays out. I think that's very tough to ask of, of guys to do. Um, I also would not be surprised if there becomes, you won't see the LeBrons, the, the megastar say this, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see that next tier superstar who says it's not worth the risk and I'm not playing. And when we get to that point, that's when it gets dangerous because, you know, if a team like Portland doesn't have Dame Lillard, like, are they really a playoff team? You know what I'm saying? So I think we're reaching that point. We're not there yet, but I think if we get into mid-June and we don't have some sort of resolution, we might have to say, you know what, it's time to scrap it. It's time to start preparing for next season, and let's just let everybody stay home and, and stay healthy. Yeah. Well, the big, the big dogs, they're ready to play because they already – they had, they, had the, uh, they got on the conference call, LeBron – Giannis, Kawhi, Chris Paul, the top, the top dogs already got in the call. They're ready to play. As far as the fans go, the fans ain't going to be there anyway, so they'll be safe regardless. So that one, you know, you kind of X that off, off the list. Um, but as far as the season goes, man, nah, you got you gotta, if you can have it, you got to have it. And like you said, there ain't no asterisks because at the end of the day, they're going to go back in. It's going to be the same thing. The teams that was going to make the playoffs, they still going to make the playoffs. Like, I don't see nobody that was supposed to make the playoffs falling off just because – we had this, uh, I guess, month and a half, two months off or whatever from, from actual uh, gameplay. Nobody's just dropping out, and they're not going to make the playoffs. So if even if you start right back now, it's going to be the same thing. And, I, you know, I'm, the players want to play. Most, I'm pretty sure even even the lower-tier ones, they want to get out there because at the end of the day, that's your check right there too. At some point, if you're not playing, that money stopped coming in. So even the low-tier guys, they want to get their they, they contracts <laughs> fulfilled. I, no, I, I think if, if they took a poll and they said, you know, how many players do you think want to play? I would easily say 80, 85 percent. I think yeah. it's a small number of guys who probably are cautious about playing. Um, but we got to remember. Reasons. Right. We, we've got to remember the, the numbers haven't started to curve anywhere. So, yeah. you know, again, what are the logistics like for this to happen? Are we putting all the players in one city and saying, hey, we're playing all the games here? Are we still expecting guys to travel city to city to play? Like, there have been a lot of different um, ideas floated around as far as maybe you set up two, quote, unquote, campuses where you have uh, eight teams sitting in Orlando and they all play out of that location and another eight teams in Vegas. But even with that, like I said, there's still issues you got to figure out because if, if you're telling me I've got to be away from my family for the next two and a half months to play these playoffs, all right, get it. That's my job. I've got to do it. But then are you also telling me that I can only stay within the, the, the confines of that facility? I'm not going to be able to go out either. Like, that's the other tough part in this, too, because what are the logistics like? If you're telling me you we're putting eight teams in Las Vegas, are we saying that none of these teams are ever going to walk around Las Vegas and do the other things that are going on within that city? Because keep in mind, their mayor has already come out that they want to reopen the casinos and they want to reopen that nightlife over there. So you're, you're putting other people at risk now that if I put you in a city that has opened back up, I can't force you to stay in your hotel. I can't force you to stay within the, the, the basketball facilities. And now I got to run the risk that you might have been out at a restaurant or you might have been somewhere and come in contact with somebody who does have the virus. At the end of the day, we're still not open. So saying to resume the, the, the season, we don't even know when, when we're going to resume the world. 
So I think it's too soon to even be trying to figure out with them playing. Like, I don't think that the NBA out of all professions in the world should be the first that are really talking right now, trying to get back. Like, I think that there's so many, there's so many Americans not working and there's so many jobs that are, are really imperative. And I'm going to be honest, it's like, I, and this comes from me, I love sports and I love sports, but it's really a sport. Like, and like, you know, and I, and this sounds hypocritical because there are people that work at these stadiums and stuff that need to be put back into work as well. Right. But I think that the league needs to figure that out because they bring in way too much money for that to not even be handled. Right. But I think, um, you know, there was news today that Los Angeles will be closed for another three months. Um, I'm not sure if you guys heard that. New York got pushed back to June 7th. So yeah, I think his comments make sense. Like, let's just focus. I think, I mean, to not scrap it, I don't know how you can do the season as it pushes towards next year. You know what I mean? So, because we don't know when we're open. If we were open right now, then you, then it's like, yeah, but we're still, like, the world is still closed. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, hard, I agree. a hard deadline to start. So huh? if they say, it would have to be like a hard deadline to start. So let's say if, if they'll, they'll say, all right, if the if everything is not open up by August 15th, that's it. There's no, we can't, we can't do it after that. Yeah. You know, there would have to be something like that to where, all right, now we're going to scrap the season. But we'll keep it, you know, we'll keep the, keep it open yeah. for now. And then, you know, we'll kind of play it by ear. But if we get into August, like I said, we get mid-August and it's not even looking like we're anywhere close to opening back up, then now we start talking about scrapping the season. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and like M said, the country as a whole hasn't even figured out when it's going to reopen. So unless we have, again, I'm not, I'm not saying scrap it right now, right. but we've got to get to a point where we got to say, all right, look, we're, we're going to keep working on it. But if we get to this point, as you mentioned that, we, we're getting into, you know, mid-June, July, even August. At some point, we've got to say, all right, look, let's just move on. Um, I, I just think there's too many moving parts. And I agree with you, Em. As much as I love basketball, I understand that it should not be the top priority as to when no. we're going to get basketball again. I agree with that as yeah. well. I think that, you know, yes, there are people's livelihoods who depend on it. And we're not talking about the millionaires and the upper echelon players. You know, there are certain people who are in our field uh, and media who need sports to be back so that they can keep putting out content and keep receiving yeah. a check. You know, no, but it's, it's true because even ESPN has openly said that they don't know how they're going to move forward with their personnel if there are no sports. You know, they've got, yeah, they've got time slots well. that are dedicated to basketball that if there's no basketball, what are we paying you guys to be here for? Um, so yeah. those people needed to be back as well. And we wanted to be back so we can talk about it. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I don't want to rush guys back just for the sake of saying, oh, we've got sports back on. And then worst case scenario, we get an, another Rudy Gobert situation where a guy contracts it and now he's in this facility with other teams that now they're at risk. We have a situation where a young athlete loses his mother because she contracted it. Right. So that's the thing. I just think it's irresponsible to be trying to set these phone calls and say, look, you need to get back when these athletes have to go home to family members. This is a contact sport, you know? So this is a sport where if somebody gets it from whatever way, it can travel to people's parents and their kids. And so I think it's, it's still a very serious matter. And I think that, you know, we should um, take it day by day and really think about what makes the most sense, but trying to rush the season or, deciding to scrap it. I think it's too soon to even make that decision or have that conversation right now until we reopen. Oh, I 1000% agree. I, I would love to see it back, but I think there's things that are far more important than that. And we, we've got to proceed with caution. And as you mentioned, them, the last thing we want to see is someone get sick and now their family's at risk because we wanted to force a season and, and see basketball. This is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 